Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. In this video, we'll explore impressive embankment and breakwater construction projects around the world. The construction process of the Acropodes Dam in Cerber has been a significant undertaking. Given the challenging coastal environment and the need to protect the town from powerful sea storms, the design of the Cerber Dam is based on the use of acropodes, a type of concrete block commonly used along the Mediterranean coast. However, the new generation of acropodes being used in Cerber allows for easier and faster installation. The construction process involves collecting scattered rocks and materials from the sea, sorting them according to different sizes, and reintegrating them into the dam. Both terrestrial and maritime rock excavation techniques are employed to anchor the future acropodes and the dam to the seabed. Anchoring depths range from 2 to 8 meters, with the process taking approximately two months. At the prefabrication site, activity is at its peak. The concrete plant produces 150 cubic meters of concrete per day, and around 15 to 20 workers are engaged in the prefabrication process. The acropodes used in the project are the latest generation, weighing 5 tons each and measuring approximately 3 meters in height and width. They have been shaped and welded by the Tunisian company Seize Comets, who are specialists in this field. This marks the first time that the latest generation of acropodes has been manufactured and installed in France, making the Cerber project a pioneering endeavor. Acropodes are produced here. When the concrete reaches the required hardness, the mold is removed. Acropodes blocks will be transported to the dump. After the acropodes have undergone a drying period of 21 days, they are ready to be transported and installed on the structure of the Cerber Dam. To handle the heavy acropodes, a powerful 200-ton crane is utilized. This crane is not only capable of lifting the massive blocks, but also equipped with GPS guidance technology to ensure precise positioning. The GPS system assists the crane operator in accurately placing the acropodes according to a predefined plan, ensuring that they are aligned correctly and fit seamlessly into the overall structure of the dam. However, the installation process requires more than just the crane operator's expertise. Divers play a vital role in assisting the crane operator during the placement of the acropodes. The divers work in coordination with the crane operator, providing visual guidance and ensuring that the blocks are positioned accurately in accordance with the predetermined plan. The majority of materials used in the construction, including rocks and aggregates, are sourced from the remnants of the old dam. However, additional rock supplies are obtained from quarries to meet the required quantities. In total, approximately 32,000 cubic meters of rock have been dredged and placed, with the rocky blocks weighing between 1 and 10 tons. A combination of maritime and terrestrial transport methods have been employed to transport and position a total of 70,162 acropodes blocks and 400 grooved cubic blocks. During the construction of the Cerber Dam, a significant amount of concrete was used for the crown wall and keys, totaling 3,000 cubic meters. This substantial quantity of concrete was necessary to ensure the structural integrity and stability of these key components of the dam. The crown wall serves as a protective barrier against the force of the sea, while the keys provide additional support and functionality for the overall infrastructure.
Once the main construction phases are completed, the focus shifts to the final stage of the ongoing project. This phase involves the precise placement of the remaining acropodes blocks using specialized self-propelled cranes. These cranes are meticulously operated to ensure accurate alignment and positioning of the blocks. The purpose of these final acropodes is to securely connect and integrate the existing acropodes with the crown wall. The completed Cerber Dam has a length of 110 meters, a height of 4 meters, a 6.20 meter wide promenade, and a depth of 12 meters. The production of wave dissipating blocks, commonly known as tetrapods, involves several stages to ensure the manufacturing of high quality and durable structures that effectively dissipate wave energy. This section shows an overview of the production process. Assembly of three shape forming pieces. In this step, Three shape-forming pieces are brought together and assembled in a specific configuration to create the mold for the tetrapod. These pieces are designed to give the tetrapod its characteristic shape. Pouring concrete mix. Once the shape-forming pieces are assembled, a concrete mix is prepared according to the required specifications. The concrete mix is typically a combination of cement, aggregates, such as sand and gravel, water, and sometimes additives. The mix is carefully poured into the mold formed by the shape forming pieces. Compacting of the concrete mix with a vibrator. To ensure the concrete mix fills the mold uniformly and eliminates any air pockets or voids, a vibrator is used. The vibrator is inserted into the concrete mix and its vibrations help to compact the mix, improving its density and strength. The compaction process also helps to remove any trapped air bubbles. All connections are tight. Leakage of the mixture is excluded. After the concrete mix is compacted, the tetrapod is carefully inspected to ensure all connections are tight. Any potential leaks in the concrete mixture are checked and addressed, ensuring the tetrapod is properly formed and structurally sound. Curing and demolding. After pouring and vibrating, the filled molds are left undisturbed to allow the concrete to cure and gain strength. The curing process is crucial for the development of the tetrapod's durability and structural integrity. It typically takes several days or weeks depending on the specific concrete mix and curing conditions. Once the tetrapods have reached sufficient strength, the molds are dismantled and the blocks are demolded. Careful handling is necessary to prevent any damage to the newly formed tetrapods during this stage. Quality control and finishing. Each tetrapod is inspected for any defects or imperfections. Quality control measures ensure that the finished blocks meet the required standards and specifications. Any necessary repairs or adjustments are made at this stage. The tetrapods may also undergo surface treatments, such as sandblasting, to improve their resistance to erosion and enhance their appearance. Kaisen technology has revolutionized the construction of port infrastructures. It offers a wide range of design possibilities, making it suitable for various marine structures such as vertical keys, docks, sea containers, offshore foundations, mooring dolphins, and offshore stations. This versatility allows for innovative solutions and even the simultaneous construction of docks and keys, providing a mixed approach compared to traditional breakwater options. Essentially, a kaisen is a concrete and steel structure that provides rigidity and stability to marine structures. Asiona Infrastructure, a leader in the field with over 100 years of experience, has built the largest reinforced concrete kaisen in the world, measuring 66.5 meters long, 24.6 meters wide, and 34 meters high. The first step in constructing a kaisen is the preparation of a reinforced concrete floor. A raft with steel rods is introduced to reinforce the floor of the kaisen building dock. 
This floor serves as the foundation for the entire structure. Once the floor is in place, the next step is to lower the structure that suspends the formwork. The formwork, which is a temporary mold or casing, is then coupled up as it slides down. This formwork will contain the concrete during the pouring process. With the formwork in position, the concrete is poured into the caisson. It is important to ensure the concrete is properly mixed and of high quality to ensure the strength and durability of the caisson. The concrete is left to set and harden. Once the caisson is completed, the formwork is removed, leaving the caisson ready for further construction or deployment. To anchor and support the caissons, rock fill foundations are often used. Barges are employed to transport the rocks and load them onto the foundation where the caissons will be anchored. Finally, the caissons are anchored and stabilized by ballasting themselves. This is done by adjusting the weight and balance of the caissons, ensuring they remain stable and in position. The construction process of a caisson offers advantages such as reduced construction time, enhanced worker safety, lower environmental impact, and the flexibility to manufacture and join caissons in different locations before floating them to their final position. This process has revolutionized the construction of port infrastructures, providing a versatile and efficient method for building marine structures. The construction of the key wall at the new Tima port facility in MPS, Marine Port Services, utilizes caissons cast on land method. This construction technique involves the creation and installation of large concrete structures called caissons to form the key wall. To begin the process, a trench is dredged in the seabed at a depth of 19 meters. This trench serves as the foundation for the caissons. The caissons themselves are prefabricated on land, with each unit requiring an impressive 1,000 cubic meters of concrete. These massive structures weigh around 2,600 tons each. Once the caissons are completed on land, they are transported onto a floating dock. To begin the transfer process, the completed caissons are carefully positioned near the edge of the floating dock. The inflatable airbags, made of robust and durable materials, are strategically placed beneath the caissons. These airbags are designed to be strong enough to support the weight of the caissons while providing a low friction surface for their movement. Once the airbags are in position, they are inflated with compressed air. As the airbags expand and inflate, they create a cushion of air between themselves and the dock's surface. This air cushion reduces the friction between the caissons and the dock, making it easier to roll the caissons onto the floating dock. Using specialized equipment, such as hydraulic jacks or winches, the caissons are gradually rolled onto the airbags. The smooth, controlled movement is achieved by carefully coordinating the forces applied to each caisson. This process ensures that the caissons maintain their stability and alignment during the transfer. As the caissons roll onto the airbags, they glide smoothly along the surface of the dock. The inflated airbags provide a cushioned pathway, minimizing any potential impact or damage to the caissons. This method is especially useful when dealing with large and heavy structures like the 2,600-ton caissons used in the construction of the key wall at MPS. At this point, the floating dock is intentionally sunk, causing the caissons to float. Tugs then maneuver the caissons into their designated positions along the key wall. To secure them in place, the caissons are deliberately filled with water, causing them to sink and settle into the seabed. To complete the construction, the caissons are filled with sand, and the deck of the key is cast on top. This final step ensures a stable and functional key wall that can accommodate various maritime activities. In the manufacturing process of the concrete floating pontoons for the Urban Rigger 2.0 project, the fabrication of molds played a crucial role in achieving the desired shape and dimensions of the pontoons. The molds were constructed using a combination of rebar and steel frames to provide strength and stability during the casting process. The steel frames were constructed using sturdy steel bars or beams that were welded together to create the desired shape. The rebar was strategically placed within the steel frames, forming a lattice-like structure. The rebar was secured to the steel frames using wire or metal ties to ensure proper alignment and stability. With the molds in place and the concrete mix prepared, the pouring process began. The concrete mixture was carefully and evenly poured into the molds, 
taking care to prevent the formation of air pockets or voids. This was done using a concrete pump to facilitate a smooth and controlled flow. The bottom deck of each pontoon was constructed with a thickness of 25 centimeters, providing a sturdy foundation for the entire structure. The area covered by the bottom deck measured 220 square meters per pontoon, offering ample space for various purposes. The external walls of the pontoons were built with a thickness of 20 centimeters, ensuring structural integrity and resistance to external forces such as waves and weather conditions. The internal walls, on the other hand, had a slightly thinner thickness of 15 centimeters, which still provided sufficient strength and durability for the internal spaces. To complete the pontoon structure, a deck with a thickness of 20 centimeters was added on top. This deck not only served as a walking surface but also contributed to the overall stability and load-bearing capacity of the pontoons. The height of the pontoons varied, with the lower side measuring 3.2 meters and the upper side reaching 3.62 meters. This design allowed for a multi-level structure, accommodating different functionalities and providing a diverse living or working environment. Once the manufacturing process was completed on land, the final pontoon was transported and set sail to Denmark, where it would be utilized in the Urban Rigger 2.0 project. The hull of each pontoon, excluding the deck, weighed 250 tons, while the total weight of the hull, including the deck, amounted to 330 tons. The construction of the protective belt for the new Eco District in Monaco began in the port of Marseille, where meticulous planning and precise execution were crucial. 18 reinforced concrete caissons, each weighing a staggering 10,000 tons, were manufactured to serve as the foundation for the offshore extension. The manufacturing process involved continuous casting, with the caissons being poured with reinforced concrete into large molds. These molds were placed on a specially constructed floating metal structure known as the Marco Polo. This continuous casting method allowed for efficient and continuous production of the caissons. Once the concrete was poured, the caissons were left to cure and gain strength. After the curing process, the caissons were prepared for their installation. They were carefully positioned and floated on the water surface. This floating stage allowed for the caissons to be maneuvered into the desired locations before being sunk. To sink the caissons, a controlled flooding technique was employed. The caissons were designed with specific compartments that could be filled with water. As the compartments were gradually flooded, the weight of the caissons increased, causing them to gradually descend into the water. The sinking process was carefully controlled to ensure that the caissons settled firmly on the seabed. This method allowed for precise positioning and alignment of the caissons, ensuring a stable foundation for the offshore extension. The weight of the caissons, along with their reinforced structure, provided the necessary stability to withstand the forces exerted by the sea. As the caissons gradually sank into the water, they formed a protective belt surrounding the construction area. This belt served as a barrier to protect the future eco-district from the sea's forces while providing a stable base for further construction activities. The erection of the North Channel Bridge marks a significant milestone in the ambitious North Channel Bridge replacement project undertaken by the esteemed Can-Am Group. Situated in Cornwall, Ontario, this construction endeavor aims to replace an aging highway bridge that spans the majestic St. Lawrence Seaway. The erection process of the North Channel Bridge involves intricate engineering, meticulous planning, and precise execution. With the expertise and experience of the Can-Am Group, this monumental task is being carried out with utmost care and precision. The bridge, designed to withstand the test of time and support heavy traffic loads, will provide a vital transportation link between two regions, enhancing connectivity and fostering economic growth. As the construction team meticulously follows the project timeline, the erection of the North Channel Bridge commences with the assembly of its components. The massive steel beams, carefully fabricated off-site, 
are transported to the construction site. Crane operators skillfully position the beams into place, aligning them with accuracy, ensuring structural integrity, and adhering to rigorous safety standards. The erection process is a marvel to behold, as the bridge gradually takes shape, spanning the vast expanse of the St. Lawrence Seaway. The onlookers are captivated by the synchronized ballet of machinery as construction workers skillfully maneuver the steel beams into position, securing them with precision welding and connecting various sections of the bridge. As the last beam is put into place, a sense of accomplishment permeates the air. The erection of the North Channel Bridge symbolizes the culmination of collective effort, dedication, and expertise. It stands as a testament to the vision and commitment of the Can-Am Group, who have successfully delivered a vital infrastructure project that will serve the community for generations to come. In Qinjiang, Vietnam, several projects are being implemented to manage coastal erosion, prevent landslides along the coastline, and restore mangrove forests to cope with climate change and improve livelihoods for coastal communities. One of these projects is the construction of the Mui Ran Coastal Protection Embankment in Bien. Construction process of D300 reinforced concrete pipe pile at Mui Ran Embankment, Anbien, Qinjiang is quite simple. The piles were attached to the excavator's bucket using chains. The piles are then transported to the designated locations for installation. The operator of the excavator uses the bucket to drive the piles deep into the seabed. This process requires precision and high technical expertise to ensure the piles are securely and stably driven into place. The Mui Ran Coastal Protection Embankment Project in Nbien spans a length of 5,000 meters and is currently being implemented. Through pile driving and embankment construction, this project aims to protect the coastline from erosion and provide favorable conditions for the livelihoods and lives of people in the area. The process of constructing BTCT D300 pipe piles is an essential part of building the coastal protection embankment contributing to the safety and sustainability of the coastal infrastructure and environment in the region. The construction of the embankment was a significant phase in the offshore extension project in Monaco. The embankment played a crucial role in providing additional stability and support to the platform and the overall infrastructure. The construction process began with the transportation of quarry materials to the construction site. Specialized boats equipped with conveyors passed above the Kaisen belt, efficiently delivering the quarry materials to the designated location. This innovative approach minimized the logistical challenges and facilitated the distribution of materials. Various earthwork workshops were then responsible for carefully distributing the quarry materials onto the platform. The materials, typically measuring 0 by 50 millimeters, were strategically placed, layer by layer, to create a strong and solid embankment. Each layer was compacted to ensure optimal density and stability. The embankment served multiple purposes, 
Firstly, it provided a robust foundation for the subsequent construction activities, ensuring that the platform had a stable base. Secondly, it acted as a protective barrier against the forces of the sea, shielding the eco-district from potential erosion and wave impact.